Welcome to Square Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of Web Pixel, and um, we'd like to thank Ionon. I'm going to use its uh, North American translation today um, for sponsoring this episode. Um, and Ionon produce a wide range of strobes, um, lights, um, and um, wet lens accessories, um, housings. In fact, a very, very broad range of underwater photography gear. Please head on over to inon.jp to check out what they're up to. Um, lots of good stuff there. And I'd like to welcome regular contributor Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to see you. Good to see you too. Um, and um, so I, I was going to ask Alex, Alex and I have dived together quite a lot, and I was going to ask Alex how he avoids managing to, or how he manages to avoid looking like a Christmas tree while he's underwater. So why well, do you not look, why do you not look like a Christmas tree? Well, I do like Christmas and Christmas trees, and obviously being the father of a four-year-old, there's lots of fairies in, in, around my house, so thankfully I don't have to dress up like one too much on camera. But um, yeah, so um, so you know, I have to say I do enjoy Christmas. I do love presents. I do love toys, and all those things I think are shared with a lot of underwater photographers. But I would say that as, as if if you are motivated by getting the best images you can on a dive, taking all those toys down with you every single time is not the way to do it. Uh, you know, great underwater pictures come when we think about what we want to produce and we optimize our gear, ourselves, our diving for those shots. They don't come about by taking everything we possibly own underwater, being interested in shooting every single shot possible on a particular dive. Now, I have to say that there are downsides of this. On the, the last dive that I did, it's nice to be able to say that and not be talking about a previous year. So when I was diving um, last week um, on one of the dives there, we had a, a huge angler fish. It's kind of like a, um, a steamrolled frogfish that we get in temperate waters, um, but, but, you know, three feet long, a meter long on a shallow shore dive. And I had a macro lens on and I had a wide angle in the car. Um, and, you know, had I been carrying some sort of wet wide adapter underwater, I could have got a brilliant shot of this anglerfish in the end. I was limited. So the downside of optimizing for a particular shot is, yes, you will miss certain things. Yep. However, over time, you learn very quickly as an underwater photographer that actually going in the water with particular plans, particular objectives, streamline dive gear, streamline camera gear is the way you create those amazing shots. Absolutely. And yeah, so um, that's really my motivation for not looking like a Christmas tree, is that if I want to have a smooth, easy to use camera system, I don't want it covered in junk. If I right. want to be able to move my flash guns around to create the lighting I want, I don't want flip filters and torches that I don't need on that dive. Now, if I do need them, of course they're going on, but then something else is being left behind. I'm not going to go down on a dive with, you know, all the macro accessories I own um, and expect to be able to use all of them on a dive. I'd much rather speak to dive guides, speak to the people I'm diving with, use my own knowledge of the dive site to decide what I'm going for on that dive and optimize yeah. my gear for that shot and not overly complicate things. I think, I, we, can, mm. so I think we can backtrack slightly, Alex, as well. I mean, I think um, that the diving gear that we choose as well, and obviously, you know, we're underwater photographers, underwater image makers, um, and, and the first part of that is we're underwater. And we need, typically need certain gear, equipment, diving equipment in order to achieve the results we want. Having said that, you know, a lot of the time, really good underwater imagery is actually created with a snorkel, you know. So, so you know, we need to basically decide how we're going to go about just capturing a picture. And, and as divers, I think most divers would say, you know, they tend to be, they tend to collect additional gear and, you know, double tanks and side mounts and rebreathers and all the other toys that you can get. Now, and of course, those have a place if you need them to capture a particular image. You know, if you're going deep, take pictures of, of deep wrecks, is a rebreather a good tool? Absolutely. But if conversely, if you're capturing pictures of seahorses in five meters of water a rebreather really is not an essential tool and, and i would argue creates more complication that would reduce your efficiency as an underwater photographer in that environment so in general not only our camera equipment but our diving equipment whenever possible keep it simple and i know alex we, we come back to you, you always you know reducing weight you know as in as in weighting when you're diving is, is something that you use you, you invest a lot of time and effort in doing um yeah, yeah, but, but I, I'm, I'm, you know, completely with you on on that. Is that 
I think one of the big differences between a still photographer and a videographer hmm. is I think a videographer is about, you know, is about being at one with the subject matter, being as unintrusive as possible and getting the most amazing things to play out in front of them and then just hit the go button. The yeah. underwater photographer is maybe trying to create with lighting, with technique, with camera settings, an amazing image out of the scenes that they're diving with. Yeah. And as a result, the underwater photographer needs, I think, more spare thinking capacity, but doesn't need the advantages that a rebreather brings. And I think a lot of videographers find rebreathers are exactly the right tool for them because yeah. for them, the most important thing is for them to be as close to the action as possible yeah. and for the action to play out. The still yeah. photographer needs more spare capacity thinking wise and therefore a simpler diving setup is often better for them. Yeah, yeah, quite good. Yeah, yeah. So and then obviously, um, so in general, when we when we talk about camera equipment, um, you know, there is a there is a temptation that we've bought it, so we'll take it with us. Um, and um, and you know, I think reducing is always a good idea. And, and this, you know, if you're night diving, do you need torches? Yes, but the majority of um, the newer cameras actually autofocus pretty well without focus lights and daylight um, you know it's a generalization um, but mm. but oftentimes so so you know if you don't need an, a, a focus light to help your camera focus then it's probably best not to take it um, and um, the flip side well maybe I should ask the question actually if you don't need it what would be the downside of taking it if you didn't need it I think it's just bulking up your system. The more weight you're carrying, the more you're pushing through the water. I've been shore diving recently with often some quite hard work entries and particularly exits, clambering back up to, to the car park or whatever. And, you know, every bit you're carrying is something else. You're lugging up through through all of that. But photographically, overloading your camera system can actually make it harder to use, more distracting, less adaptable to get the perfect shot. You know, for example, shooting macro, a lot of the best subjects might be tucked away. Mm. And if your camera rig is oversized, you're not mm. going to be able to get that camera into those positions to unlock those shots. Mm. Um, and so keeping it streamlined can really get you a shot that other, other people can't get. Um, the same with, with wide angle, you know, if you if actually the conditions or the subject matter on the dive is really suited to close focus wide angle, going in with great long strobe arms is you know, yes, you can bend the arms back on themselves so the flash guns can be nice and tight to the housing for your close focus wide angle. But those great big strobe arms are getting in, in the way of your, of your shooting. And I think it's why, as you become a wiser, more experienced underwater photographer, you learn that all the gear has its place because all the different options, whether it's long strobe arms, small, short strobe arms, big dome ports, smaller dome ports, they all have mm. a place to allow you to optimize for particular shots. Yeah. And understanding what you're going for, choosing the right gear to go for those shots and diving that gear without all the other bits with you allows you to make standout images in every area. Yep. Um, something that both of us do on our macro trips is we'll rig our cameras up for vertical images yep. so that instead of having the strobes coming out either side of the housing, we, we say, right, you know, I, I certainly I know I do this. I'll go, right, today is going to be a verticals day. And I'm going to rig my camera up with one strobe arm coming off its normal position and the other strobe arm bolted into the, the um, into tripod a, um, a tripod mount on the bottom of the housing somewhere. Yeah. And then I'm going to take my left hand handle off the housing so that right. I can get my camera right down low on the sand to get better quality vertical images of, of seahorses, of gobies on the sand, of scorpion fish on the sand in a vertical format with a much lower camera angle that someone who can't be bothered to take their strobe arm off, to take their handle off. And yep. that optimization for the shot, having a simple plan and sticking to it, gets me a much better quality image than they could ever get because my camera has been adapted to get that shot. So yep. my shot will always have a better polish. And as I always remind everyone at the beginning of all my workshop trips, is we're judged as underwater photographers, not by our average shot, but by our best work. Yep. And when we have an idea for a shot, pushing ourselves to make our best work as good as possible is the most important thing we can do as photographers because no one cares if oh yeah yeah but you were set up for that oh yeah so i couldn't take an average shot of this subject that yeah. average shot has no bearing on me as a photographer getting the best possible shot of this dive of the particular subject that i wanted in the way i wanted 
is a yeah. much more valuable thing for me to do because that's a picture I'm going to take time to show people. If I if I miss out on getting a, an average shot of another subject, then that's really no harm. I'm never going to show anyone that picture. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm happy to make that comp that, that compromise. There's another example that, that certainly we, we we do on, on the macro workshops, and that's the one strobe challenge. And obviously there are lots of there are lots of um, there are advantages to shooting macro with one strobe. Um, but the principal one again is it makes it simpler. And this is where a really good example of simplifying your equipment actually can make you more productive underwater by simply removing the task loading of trying to control the fall of light from two strobes. Um, it can actually make you a much more productive macro photographer. Now it won't suit all environments or all subjects or all conditions. But again, I think this idea that we try and simplify, which then allows us to focus on what's important and not to get distracted by the fact that we've got bits everywhere that we need to balance and could we use that could we use, well you haven't got it you can't use it so you use what you've got and going in with your camera correctly set up actually makes you more productive yeah definitely. yeah no, yeah I, I, I really agree i mean um i think there's a benefit as well is that one of the things that when i'm you know teaching on workshops you know whether we're doing filter photography or whether we're doing one strobe challenge or whatever people always go but what happens if you know yeah. that fear of missing out <laughs> And the reality is in, in both, you know, in all these cases, the real thing that you're missing out on is the learning. And if you have all the gear in your pockets, instead of figuring out how to do something and actually learning something with the gear that you have, you reach yeah. out and grab another accessory and you don't get that education. And that's the thing that you should be fearful of missing out on, not missing out on taking a, an OK shot of a subject that you weren't optimized for. Um, and I think that's a really Im important aspect of it. Um, I think the other thing that, that I, I would, would say is that as a photographer um, in those situations, it's really important, I think, to get into that mindset of it's about getting you know the best possible shot. And I think yeah. once you get that mindset, all these other aspects tend to fall into place. It, it's obvious to optimize for the shot because yeah. that's what you're judged on as a photographer. I, it's absolutely, you know, I I remember a particular example of uh, in Raja a few years ago, well, quite a few years ago now, but um, you know, where I was actually being hunted by a by a white tip, um, soon around round behind me, and was obviously very interested in what I was doing, being hunted to see strong. But and I was thinking, this is me, and of course I had a hundred and five mil or something. Cause I was shooting macro, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, what I did was I sat back, I enjoyed the experience and interaction with the show up. You know, I had a we had a we had a five minutes of hanging out together. Um, he got close to me, I close to him. We had a good time. I didn't try to interfere with him. It was a wonderful experience, you know. And, and then I went back to shooting macro and he went off to go and do shark things. And, you know, there's, that's, although I haven't got any imagery to show of that particular experience, it was still a wonderful experience. You know, you, you, just because you, you can't take pictures of it doesn't make it any less valid. So, so sometimes maybe, you know, if we've got the wrong lens on, yeah, okay, so what? Enjoy the experience and then get back to what you're doing. Um, and yeah. um, you know, yeah, I'm definitely concerned on, on, you know, on macro workshops with photographers that are going in with all these accessory lenses bolted onto the top of their strobe arms with, you know, cargo shorts on with big pockets full of snoots and all, you know, off camera flash guns and everything. And I mean, I own and use all those accessories, but mm, I don't yeah. take them in on every dive. I go right on this dive. I've got a good chance of seeing that subject. And with that subject, I want to try this technique and I will take a limited number in because I think the moment you take all that in, you're giving yourself too many options, too many distractions, and you become the, the jack of all trades, master of none. And I think you really, you know, as photographers, we're not judged on that average. We're judged on the standouts. And that's where keeping it simple, keeping it focused and keeping it excellent really comes through. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Alex. So you mentioned you've been diving this week. Yeah. When, are we gonna, when and where are we going? When and where are we going to see the pictures? <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I've shared a couple of them on Instagram. Um, Fantastic. So yeah. So that that's where I've I've been a bit busy, and um, so I haven't had a chance with other work. But yeah, I'll, I'll try and get a few up. I have to say, um, I've only been diving on shallow shore dives um, in England, so nothing particularly spectacular. But it was wonderful to be behind a camera again. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, lovely to be in the water. The water in, in the moment in England, it's 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 April um, when we're recording this, and the water's really cold on the south coast. It's been quite a cold, long winter here. Mm. Um, but I I think was so excited to be in the water. It just wasn't cold. Didn't I think I did like, like 95 minutes on the first dive, and I was just like, oh, it's wow. so nice to be in the water. I don't want to get out. 
So, yeah. <laughs> so people can see you on Instagram at Alex Mustard One, I think. Yes. But if you, yeah, sorry, if, yeah, you if you search for you, you'll find Alex. Um, so that's wonderful. Um, and um, obviously, um, now that he's back in the water, we look forward to seeing lots more of your energy. Please, Alex. Um, thank you very much. Um, and again, we'd like to thank Ainon for its one episode. Thank you very much. We can't do these episodes without the sponsor support, so we really appreciate it. Um, please feel free to add any comments about um, our ideas in the comment section below this and drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you next time.